Hello. We are trying something new today. We are uh, going to experiment with a tier ranking list. We had the idea of going in and, you know, assigning YouTubers do this kind of stuff, right? Um, we're going <laughs> to assign tier rankings to our projects from our early uh, seasons. We, we looked at season one, and I think it was only like four or five. So that wasn't really enough. So we're doing season one and two, um, and we're going to assign them to the different tiers. That we're very specifically talking about the quality of the adaptation in comparison to the book. And it's, so it's not like the project, it's not our coverages that we're ranking, anything like that. Yeah, it's I don't even know gonna... if it's in comparison. It's, it's more just like, is it a good adaptation? I guess that's yeah. something we'll have to decide. Because you could have a great adaptation for a book that was even better than the adaptation, and the adaptation could still be great. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. True. So it'll just depend. We'll, we'll talk about it for each one. We're, we're going to spend a lot of time because we got to get through a lot of them here. Like I said before, this is the first time ever doing this. So uh, let us know if you if we should tweak it at all. If this is the kind of thing you like, let us know, and we'll maybe we'll do it again for uh, our future seasons we did or. Yeah. Our, other seasons from the past <laughs> we uh, also have to be pretty ruthless here right like we're gonna have to be like make decisions we're gonna have to compromise sometimes with each other because yeah. we're gonna try to come to a consensus we're gonna try and come to a consensus as a podcast so that might be difficult or it might not be i don't know but uh we're gonna go through it chronologically okay so our very first project was it volume one uh chapter one uh i assume we're just going to rank chapter one here and we'll save chapter two for later as far as, you know, an adaptation, uh, this was our very first project on the pod. So, uh, you know, a lot of nostalgia here, but just thinking about the film, uh, gut reaction, what are you thinking for it? I got the, I got it down here. What do we think? You know, we're, we're biased a little bit to this, but this is an A, this is an A for me. An A? Yeah. yeah I was kind of thinking A or B, um, but I, yeah, I think it's an A. I think it was, it, it was a, it was a good adaptation not great, mm -hmm. um, but good, you know, uh, I, I think, you know, I th definitely of the two, it's the better film. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. it's easy to say. Um, the kids were great. Uh, Pennywise, I thought was scary. I thought well acted. Um, you know, we talk about it at length on a pod, but um, yeah, I think A is a good <laughs> yeah. spot for that. I think it's, I think it's made better by the fact that it became a cultural phenomenon. It was our first project for like a uh, I'm bringing a little bit of bias with that one. So it's special to yeah. us, but yeah, like it, I, I can't give it an S. So we're, right. we're going to have to go with A and I could see a B, but because of our bias, I'm going A. So our next project was Blade Runner. Now we also covered 2049. We're not going to talk about that one because uh, it's not really an adaptation of Do Android's Dream, but Blade Runner is. My gut reaction for Blade Runner is our very first S tier. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's happening be. early I mean, on, but we I was uh, like, we covered some classics early yeah. on in the pod. What a great movie! Um, One of my favorite movies. Period. Yeah, it's transformative. I'm not, this isn't like uh, the most faithful adaptation. It's not, not, that's not what we're ranking, right? We're ranking like how good of an adaptation is it? Is a, a good product that something that um, stands the test of time? And I think absolutely, Blade Runner is just yeah. iconic cyberpunk movie the legacy everything um, that it means and, and just how good of an adaptation it was i was ready to make you fight me on that if you were if you weren't going <laughs> s on that i was like all right well tell me why not then yeah no very it's our it's our first s tier and uh i feel good about it so next up we did the thing an adaptation of john w campbell's who goes there you know another another classic horror iconic film i mean i i feel like this is another one up here in this range uh, yeah, what, what, you, you say your... what you think it is, and then I'll, I'll I'll verify. All right, I think it's S tier. It's S. It's an S. S. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's you know, you just can't get you can't knock it, right? It's John Carpenter. It's the the practical effects are legendary. What what a great movie. Um, yeah, Kurt Russell. Yeah. 80s horror at its best. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't it know, really is. Too. Else to say there. It's S tier. <laughs> I, I'm putting that in S tier. If we were doing, if we were just ranking horror movies, that's that's making an S as well. You know. Yeah. No. And, and that's fair. Um, okay. Moving on. Howl's Moving Castle. Um, Hayao Miyazaki, uh, legendary director. One of our only animated films. I think we've done. Although we've touched on a few later, and we and I think we're gonna do more. But um, this is another man. This is another great one, right? Like uh, the it's, adaptation I mean, of the Diana Wynne Jones novel, which was good in its own right, but very different. This was really transformed by the adaptation. I don't know. What are your thoughts? A uh, legendary Hayao Miyazaki is the main thing for me. Like. 
he is uh, he's an entire industry for for anime films and, and he has been forever and he's like everyone looks to him as the influence everyone looks to him as the the master you want me to give you what i think it is yeah give it to me i'm going a going a okay so yeah. uh i was yeah i'm in this range i'm in the sa range i kind of agree that maybe it's not s tier because he has better movies um, that was my thought that's exactly you know, what i was thinking um it's good and but it's not it's not my favorite of his films i i do feel like it's a bit of a slight to not put it in s tier Agreed. but um i want to i want to keep s exclusive for cream of the crop a is not you know a is nothing to to turn your nose up at yeah. this is a when, great a great movie. And, and when these start to get slotted in you start to compare them to each other and like if we're going to compare Howl's Moving Castle to it I'm putting it I'm putting it lower you know what I mean like how about that yeah. I'll move it I'll move it towards I like the that. left uh, we got oh nothing lasts forever which was adapted into Die Hard now mm-hmm. this is going to be a tricky one to rank because people don't know this is an adaptation and it's almost unrecognizable so when you're ranking adaptations like how do you how do you judge that um do you just judge it on the quality of the film? It's tough. Um, I think, I think I'm going on this one just the quality of the film, right? And I think this this movie has a huge legacy, and and in terms of like action films, it's always going to make the list of some of the best. Yeah. Um, but I think, and this is interesting because I think this is kind of the epitome of like a B movie for me. Like this is like really? like I, I like the simple structure of it. I like that it keeps it simple in that way. Doing it's doing things better than other action movies do, but it's still leaning into tropes and and I could I could see giving it an A because it is sort of like the go to when I think of an action film. Like the the art this is like the, what's become the formula now. Die Hard. Yeah. But I, yeah, I mean, I man, love the I'm movie. Torn. It is. It's one of my favorite movies growing up. I pre- basically watch this movie every year. I have a lot of affection for it. But because I've seen it so many times and like we've talked about it so many times, like I recognize all its flaws, too. Mm-hmm. And it does have quite a few. So I super iconic moments. A to, a to B range. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, since we're talking adaptation, I think I'm more comfortable putting it in the B. If we were talking about just like quality of film, I'd be, I'd be more solidly A, I think. But because it adapted a, a book that was so different, um, it really wasn't marketed as an adaptation in any way. I don't know. I, I guess I'm just more comfortable putting it in B. It improved heavily on the the, the source material, in my That's opinion. That's true. It did, it um, did improve it, but, which maybe makes it worth an A. I don't know. Let's yeah, save it for B sure. for now. We can we can move it if, as we start to slot these things if we think it. If it yeah. deserves it. Um, okay, so we did Die Hard, and then that was the end of season one. So that's why we're going into season two, because that was only we only did five adaptations in our first season. So season two, we started the year off with Where the Wild Things Are. Uh, was it Spike Jones? Spike film? Jones, yeah. Yep. Yeah, Spike Jones film um, based off of a classic children's book um, that I grew up with. I think you said you grew Me up with too. it as well. I thought this was a good movie, not great. Not as good as I wanted it to be be agreed um, but yeah. it's also a movie i've only seen once so i don't have like real strong feelings about it either you know, i'm looking at the list of movies that we've talked about so far and like this is this kind of is one of the most forgettable and and yeah. like i think there was some fun things done i think there's like a fun journey about childhood and and like holding on to childhood but also growing up too and i think it's good for that reason and, and i i have a lot of affection for it because that was like one of my you know i feel like there's most people have like 10 childhood books that you read with your parents it's one of right, the ones yeah. for me, so I feel very close to that. Yeah. But yeah, the the Love adaptation, the book, yeah, yeah, Lit the adaptation. My imagination on fire as a kid. Definitely, the adaptation. I would just say it. I don't. Yeah. It's one of those situations where I didn't necessarily so improve. You think in C? Yeah, you I mean, you're D? hovering. You're hovering C. I think C. Does that feel right? C the, I, right? So, you, so you feel D? You think D? No, I, I, mean, I, can... I feel like D was maybe too harsh. It's a well-made film, and it's it's extremely practical. We talked about like these giant suits. That well, were, then they're, know, they're also augmented done. and then they're augmented. They were that augmented the some, but they yeah. were real thing. They were real props right. that people wore. Yeah, um, they augmented the mouths and stuff some. But yeah, I, I can't go any lower than a C on this. I don't think. Yeah, yeah I also love C. Spike Jones, too. So like, I you know, I'm going to bring that in. Yeah, this. tons of respect as a filmmaker. Absolutely. OK, next up, we did Rawhead Rex, which, you know, a, 80s B movie, C movie. <laughs> no, I mean, this um, is adaptation. A, this is a, S tier, I would say, right? 
<laughs> it's gotta be S tier. Uh, yeah, no, not S tier. The S tier of being bad. Um, it's you know, it's people have some you know affection for this movie, but yeah, if you read the story it's based on, which we did, um, it's a scary monster sco- story by Clive Barker that loses it's got, all of its teeth in the adaptation. Right. Well, I think it, it's safe to say it's got so much more nuance and subtlety and actual like messaging going on in the in the source material, and then that's completely yeah. lost in the in the adaptation. So I. I think to, in order to establish a floor, this is an F. This is an I F. think that's an F. I yeah. think it's our floor, right? I think I think you're right. Um, yeah, I, I feel kind of bad, but ultimately, if there's going to be a bottom, this is a good one for it. Yeah. Um, let's move on to our next project, which was Altered Carbon. Uh, this is our first TV series we ever covered. Um, mm-hmm. This is just for season one, by the way, um, on Netflix. Uh, Richard K. Morgan novel we both enjoyed. I think I enjoyed watching it. I think I think I remember getting bogged down some watching it and like feeling like it wasn't as precise of a story as I would have liked to have seen from yeah. from there the were some book major that we read. Changes. I remember that yeah. too, right? Um, not all for the better. But yeah, I will say I, I'm the very things that... middle of the road. Mm-hmm. It was pretty good. Uh, you know, I don't want to slam it. Things that I remember from it are like I remember performances. I, I liked the main character action i remember there being some good choreography good sets large space yeah. sort of had it, had it looked good sci-fi look yeah um some good performances for sure all right so where are we at with that what are you thinking like a this C? is tough thinking, C- thinking it's uh, a d uh, think it's a b where are we at i mean i'm kind of wide open on this one though. i'm cd range CD but range. i would say c more than d yeah i agree i like that i like c uh do we want to move it is it better than <laughs> true that's tough are. honestly i feel like they're very there it might be better just, i think it's better you think yeah. it's better all right yeah i think it's better okay we'll move it up all right next up we got annihilation which is a controversial movie a lot of people yeah. didn't like it a lot of people have strong feelings about it the book's very controversial too very mixed people love it people hate it yeah. um we are in the love category for both we love the novel love the adaptation mm-hmm. um this is an iconic like this in, in the history of our podcast. I always think back about this movie, how much it affected me, how much I loved it. Mm-hmm. So for me, this is S tier. Um, I'm putting it up there with a lot of these other iconic f- films. I, I, I agree. I yeah. could see an argument against it, but I, I don't know. I might I might yeah. argue with you. if you did. Well, this is a preference <laughs> thing, right? Like, I know that there's going to be people that are like Annihilation's not an S, but it, to me it's an s like that's a movie that like you said like that li- when that came out and we covered it for the podcast it really really engaged me and i and i love that movie i'm realizing i'm ha- i have it down here twice in our uh... well, you're gonna, it, it's s twice so yeah so i'm just gonna decisions. put this one because i can see the characters more and we'll just yeah. leave that one down there <laughs> which is gonna okay. be frustrating when we get to the end and there's an extra but oh well annihilation yeah annihilation s tier i'm s on that yeah. agreement now this is a tricky one we're getting into a wrinkle in time Mm. Um, which is, you know, a classic children's novel that neither of us read as children. So we didn't have that nostalgia that I think a lot of people have for it. We read it as adults and we're like, yeah, we, we see, we see the, the sort of charm of this novel, not really for us. Mm -hmm. Um, we went into the film expecting kind of the same result and we definitely got that it is a movie that's not made for us it's a movie made for a very young audience and and in some ways i feel like we got kind of burned from this project and realizing that maybe we need to not cover films that are made for a very very young audience because we're going to probably be overly harsh on them all that being said i still don't think it's a great movie um i think the people who like it have to recognize it, it you know not spectacular what do you think it's it's so i was excited to see an ava duvernay movie with oprah with reese witherspoon with a lot of the uh, mindy kaling like i was like oh this is gonna be fantastic this is gonna be amazing and she's gonna elevate the source material and i think even in in that episode i remember listening back to it at some point and realizing like we went i felt like i went a little softer on it because of that um i really really did not socially i felt like socially important movie when it came out i know there's a lot of people talking about it you know you know we recognize all of that right but that you know do we want to let that adjust its tier ranking i don't know um i don't know i'm d on this i'm a d on this honestly uh yeah and i i i feel like i can't give it an f in good conscience but i think d is probably a good place for it yeah that's a tricky one man let's move on from it (laughs) (laughs) um next up we did ready player one uh you know the ultimate beach read popcorn you know very little literary value book that i still like i enjoyed it you know, obviously we're the target audience for that, cis white men. 
you know, of it at a certain age. And it hit us right. We enjoyed it. Um, you know, and then the movie came out and, you know, I had fun with the movie, but certainly was a kind of a popcorn, you know, don't think about it too hard movie. We're a little more positive on the general, like a lot of people really probably like this yeah. movie. Oh, um, I think a certain demo, I think in general, it's sort of seen in that light. And then there's a certain section of people that are very passionate about it being fantastic. Um, and I think yeah, we're sort we're of not like, that either. Not, not that. <laughs> The pop culture references, everything about it, like, of course, is going to speak to us. But I, I know where I stand on this one. I want, I want to hear okay, where you. Okay, what, what do you feel? You go first. I think I'm maybe a C. Maybe a C. Yeah, I was thinking C. C, maybe D. I think it's C, but you know what I'll do to for because I know people will be upset. Is it's the top of C so far. I think it's better than where the, the wild things are and, and better than Alter Carbon, yeah. No, nah, it's not better than Altered Carbon. Now, you know, no? what? I think it's bottom of C. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I... All right, split the difference. We got to split the difference then. Middle of C. Okay, I guess we got to compromise. Yeah, let's go middle of C. Next up, we got The Fellowship of the Ring, our very first Lord of the Rings project we ever covered. Um, this is F tier, right? We yeah, I mean, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> and everybody knows that we don't like it. <laughs> Wait, don't turn and... off. Don't turn it off. We're lying. <laughs> uh no we love this uh yeah what uh do we love it s yeah do, yeah right? i mean like for me yes yeah! but if you want to talk yeah, about i mean it's I, for I, obvious for me reasons well. for obvious reasons for right obvious reasons <laughs> we're going to continue the trend of saying that <laughs> yeah uh yeah s tier um do we want to do we want to rank our s tiers do we want to move this this is gonna be Why tough we, man so maybe we do that at the end the best yeah let's do yeah, that at i'm the just end. gonna set it up there for now i'm not necessarily saying this is my ranking of the s's um, yeah. We're just going to put it up there for now. Fahrenheit 451 is our next one. It is the HBO adaptation of Ray Bradbury's classic novel. Um, and it was a real stinker. In my opinion. This was, it was, a, this was a bad movie. It was not very um, good. I'm thinking this is right in that F zone. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's got to be. Be? I mean, the only the, I like Michael Shannon and I like Michael B. Jordan. And that's the only I thing I liked about that. That's the only, only thing, thing I liked about that movie. About it. I, you know what? Yeah. I'll, I'll slot it above Rawhead for that yeah. reason but i still think it's an f i think this was a bad oh it's an f reason. it's an f i mean you look at wrinkle in time and i'm like i'm not putting fahrenheit 451 in the same category as wrinkle in time right it's a, it's it's rawhead rex territory for me moving right along we have jurassic park man we covered some iconic freaking projects in our early yeah. seasons um jurassic yeah. park michael Crichton novel read it for the first time on the podcast um Steven had a great time with it and then watch the movie. One of my favorite movies. <laughs> like I, I think yeah. it has stand the t- stand the, stood the test of time as one of my favorites. Um, yeah, this is S tier for me. What do you think? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I watched it endlessly growing up. Uh, it, it, that's one of the movies that like I look to, and I'm like, that's a that's that's. I know some people will say blockbusters were made because of Jaws, but for me and my generation, Jurassic Park is like it's the ultimate blockbuster for me. And I, yeah. it made me, I love dinosaurs growing up. We talked about all that stuff. We it hit me that, yeah. perfectly. It was the, it's yeah. like, the dino and, and it is, it's one of my favorite, one of my favorite movies of all time for sure. Yeah. S tier, man. We're it's getting, it's going to be a log jam up there. Cause we covered so many great adaptations in our early years. Yep. Um, and, and continue to, but still next up, we have American psycho, um, which, you know, what a, what a cool movie. What a, what a, wild project we did just disturbing upsetting but great i guess my question is how great is it is it yeah is it s or is it or is it in a good is it a good a you know i I feel like we've put our i'm realizing we're putting ourselves in like a an interesting situation with this whole tier ranking system (laughs) yeah Uh, because like i i I like it better than than die hard by a lot i would say and i like it probably it's an a for me I think it's pretty solidly an A. Yeah, you don't think it's an, I, it's S, not an S? No, not for me. But yeah. I do. But I do love it. Yeah, it's such a good adaptation. I think it's an S. I want to kind of move it to the maybe to the middle of S to A. Sorry, yeah. A. What do you think? Right there. I'm the into middle? that. Yeah, I like that. All right. Next up, we have another freaking iconic movie, Jaws. <laughs> Peter Benchley novel that uh, we struggled with a little bit. Uh, not terrible, but man, it had some rough patches some questionable plot choices. Um, and then we watched this movie and like my, my appreciation for Jaws was already super high, but like watching it and studying it and talking about it for the podcast, it just went to another level. Like I just yeah. love this movie now. Yeah. Um, another Steven Spielberg. We got a lot of Spielberg on here. Um, for sure. This might be an S tier for me. Uh, uh, what do you think, man? Like I, I struggle to knock um, it out of S. I do too. 
it's i mean it's like jurassic park it's the same kind of thing it's just like it didn't hit me quite as solidly but it's a, it's either s and if i don't know you could argue it being an a but to me it's like that started spielberg's legacy there's a reason why we have jurassic park there's a like there's a reason why even in his later years he's directing things like ready player one um he's still going because of the impact and everything of jaws you know we covered so many good projects early on i think our s tier is going to be pretty 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 popular um, yeah. but let's move on i think we're going to keep it there next up we did another tv show and we did sharp objects gillian flynn novel mm-hmm. um hbo series incredibly well made um mm-hmm. just you know amy adams like what a good fucking show that was um so much fun and by fun you, i mean what do you think man what a journey are we, are we high I mean, a or are it's, we it's, s uh, my instinct was a but like i can't argue with it if you want to give it an s so my instinct was a you tell me what you think and then we'll talk it out i think it's if we're going a i think it's got to be at the top of a because it is yeah. borderline man it is Agreed. it is honestly almost s uh let's go a i i mean i i i keep having to remind myself a is still good a is still good right but yeah maybe it's not quite on this level but it's almost uh, there man yeah our a tier is gonna have good. some good shit in it i remember uh, recommending sharper objects to almost everybody i knew so like it, it's very 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 good all right next up we did Coraline, our very first neil gaiman novel you know what a great book um i think we both loved reading that and then you know the was it Leica doing this this stop motion film so cool so creative i love them yeah they um, continue to just be like incredible what a, what an amazing studio and and tackling me too yeah like yeah man i'm in that as tier i'm in that range agreed here i'm as as well i i and like for for the sheer craft of it i'm i, I would be willing to give it an s um if you were a yeah. i could we could negotiate that i understand it not being quite as iconic as some of the other stuff we have in a but i don't think iconic for me like i'm not necessarily needing it to be as iconic to be in my personal right i mean yeah no Uh, i I don't think that needs to be yeah we don't need to judge it based off of how iconic it is it's it's also uh, in its own right created create like like has gone on to do a lot of things because of Coraline. i love that movie i mean looking at what's an a tier does it feel like it needs to nestle in here somewhere or does it feel like it needs to go up here yeah, it, it very much feels like the same area as like Howl's Moving Castle. And I know that those they're like sort of both YA-ish. Yeah. But that's not really How do you why. feel about it, slotting in right in front of Howl's? Or do you really want it to be S? How does that, that's tough. You're how, asking how me that to look, compare. How does that feel when you look at it? <laughs> yeah, you're asking me to compare like top tier stop motion animation to Miyazaki's Japanese animation. And I'm just like, fuck, yeah, I don't that's, know. That's like, the fun of the tier ranking, too. I guess. Yeah. I, I, I have to take Miyazaki but over, over Coraline, but it's up to you you decide here wow so wait a minute so you're saying maybe there yeah i think so okay i like it there i like it there a is going to be filled with some great fucking projects i hope people don't think we're like knocking these things yeah because they're they're awesome you know um okay next up we did edge of tomorrow uh which is adapted from the all you need is kill uh light novel edge of tomorrow tom cruise vehicle um this is not an s tier movie i think we can go ahead and say it's not that It's a good movie, though. Yeah. One of, Emily Blunt, just to say, it. Emily Blunt's Three kick movies. ass in this movie, too. Yeah, Emily Blunt, incredible. Apparently, we're going to get a sequel to this at some point. Um, Supposedly, yeah. Which, you know, I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. Is it an A tier or is this a B tier? You know That's what's interesting? Smart. But I feel like if Die Hard's a B tier, this might be a B tier. I agree. You know, because like yeah. it's a good it's a good fucking movie. And Die Hard's a good fucking movie, too. Yeah. I mean, this is action you know? Groundhog Day. Like, I love Groundhog Day. But and it's yeah. like it, it's it, I love what it does with the action and I love the way that it plays with time travel in that way and everything. Do we put it's it? Great. Do we put it above Die Hard? For my sensibilities, yeah, I would say so. Oh man, that's tough. That hurts tough. me a little bit. It's tough. I like the we'll sci-fi stuff. I like the, the blend the genre with my action and then I'm in. Yeah, you I'm know? thinking of like fucking Hans Gruber though. Yeah. Hans Gruber though. We're gonna we're gonna you know it's tough. All right, but we'll leave it for now. Good movies and B. That's what we're exciting. Yeah. Uh, next up, we did uh, a little movie called The Shining, which, you know, uh, infamous adaptation. Stephen King famously doesn't like it. Um, but it's Stanley Kubrick. But it's Stanley Kubrick. And yeah. I, we had a hell of a time covering it. I love it. Um, I think this is S tier for me. S. Yeah, S. No question. I was like, I was. that's controversial, too. I think there will be people who don't agree with that. 
Oh, but. there will be Stephen King fans who will fight you over this. Right. Um, and we're Stephen King fans. We 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 love King. We we've covered yeah. lots of his stuff. Um, and people like love to hate it. I think they take the cue from King himself because you know King looks at it and says this. They you know butchered my butchered my boy. They butchered my book. You know I, I see that. I see that it's very different. But you know he had a film he wanted to make and it's a good one and it, it stuck to his vision. It's based off of the book horror classic. Uh, yeah. I think this is S tier. For sure. You think of the meticulous director that Kubrick is and the singular vision and the, all the stories that have come out about this movie and all of his movies really. And like, there's nothing but, I don't know if there's even a single Kubrick film that I wouldn't give an S. I have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that, but this one is S tier. Yeah. Let's move on. Next up we have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Um, if we were going to rank our, uh, is the author come out as a bigot uh, ranking, yeah. I think that would be on an F because yeah, that has happened. But the tainting, we're talking about tainting the movie. people's childhoods. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about the movie, which is, you know, still obviously colored by that now. Can't mm -hmm. not be, but we're going to try not to rank it in that way, well, I guess. Let's try I mean, and focus like on the movie. There's a lot of people yeah. who weren't named J.K. Rowling that worked on these movies and and all these yeah. actors and all this, you know, it's it and yeah. it's very close to a lot of people's story is, yeah. you know, of so all in that regard, I think this is a pretty solid Harry Potter film. It is not one of the best, um, mm -hmm. but it's pretty faithful. I'm kind of in the B.C. range. Mm -hmm. How does that feel for you? I mean, I'm a, you know, massive Harry Potter fan, grew up on them, everything. I would I would be B C range, not C D range. I would uh, looking at the projects, I would give it a B, but we might have to talk about it. I, see, okay, I don't know, man. This first movie though, it, the, uh, you know, this say first what you movie. Will, but th this is what I'll say. Where are you going to put the the next one that we have to cover that that we're covering? You know, probably the same tier. <laughs> Wherever no, we put no, this I, one, I'm, I think I'm I think putting these it first below. two movies are about the same for me. You think this one's I, better? I think it's better. So you you don't get the other ones without this one doing well. First off, it's the introduction of the characters. They casted everything perfectly. That's true. It, it's it's a tight story. They didn't cut a lot from the book. So purists will be like, oh, man, it's almost a per perfect adaptation. This I, it's just incredible for a first movie to know. To, I think they were scheduled to do three movies or something like that and then see where it went. And for a first movie to become, you know, a part of the cultural phenomenon that the books were as well. I'm B and I would put. Chamber All right. You've convinced lower. me, but it's going to go at the bottom of B. That's fine. I'm fine okay. with that. Yeah. All right, I think it's going there then. Next up, we sandwiched our somehow we sandwiched our Godfather coverage with two Harry Potter films, but we did, <laughs> which is hilarious. Um, but we yeah. did the Godfather next. What a what a fun project that was. We also did Godfather two, but we're not going to rank that one because we feel like Godfather one is really the adaptation of the Mario Puzo novel. Mm -hmm. um, Mario Puzo novel, much like the Peter Benchley novel, like has some weird head scratching moments in it that that you're like what the hell is going on here but other there's still greatness in there and then that first mo movie it was my first time watching it for the podcast i'd never seen it before which I, you know people will be shocked to hear but i hadn't uh what a great movie what's your gut on this one s yeah s yeah Not i mean how do you rank the me. godfather outside of an s tier right like you, you can't yeah you can't, you can't. I mean, that, the, the performances. One of the greatest movies ever made. Like in, in, in just, made. just sub, like objectively, subjectively, however you want to look at it. If in your, most people's opinions of The Godfather are going to be very high. And I think public consensus is how good it is. And like, there's a reason yeah. for that. And it was that good, you know, and I had never yeah. seen it before. And I tried not to let its reputation hold, you know, like make me feel anything about it that I shouldn't mm -hmm. already feel. But the movie is that good. It's, it's right. just a great fucking movie. So think about the hype related to something like that, where everybody's like, it's the greatest movie ever made. And then you watch it and it lives up to that. It's incredible. You know, it's just a, yeah. it's near untouchable. It's, it's a, what a saga too. Like when you put it with part two together, it's just an insane yeah. journey. It's S tier. All right. So our last project, uh, it was our Christmas project that year was Chamber of Secrets, as we've kind of talked talked about it a little bit here. You think it's the worst movie? I, I do kind of agree. Now, that th the more I think about it, the more I agree that it is the worst movie. You know, I think Prisoner Azkaban, you know, way better. But way better. it's for these two movies, I think it is worse. I am comfortable in the CD range for yeah. so, Chamber of Secrets. The, here's my thoughts on this. I would be comfortable giving this movie a D if Wrinkle in Time wasn't in D. Because I like Harry Potter and the Chamber <laughs> of Secrets so much more than Wrinkle in Time that they're not even really in the same category. So I have to go low C 
for for Chamber of Secrets. I think Lois. And you know what's sense. funny? And you know what's funny is like I probably would take it over where the wild things are. Right? Okay, so let's take a few minutes to to like fiddle with this. Yeah. Fiddle with these rankings. Let's start at the bottom and move our way up because I think that'll be the. Yeah. The that, are we happy I think with these stays. two films on F tier? Do we do we want to put F, Wrinkle in Time in F tier? Are we good with it at D? I think we're good with it at D, right? I like it at D. Yeah. So I think these are all stay. I think that all looks good, right? Um, now we'll look at our C tier. We could leave it as is, honestly. Leave it I, as I, is. Okay. I can. We can move Chamber of Secrets up, but I think leave it how it is. Oh yeah, like better than where the wild where the wild things, wild are. things are. I think are, where but... the wild things are might be a better movie. It's just really? Harry Potter. It's a Harry Potter movie, right? So I think you kind of like get wrapped up in the the larger mythos. I definitely um, do. Like, it's got there's no Dobby question in it about that. stuff, I guess, yeah. but. But there's overall, a lot of great like, stuff in Chamber real of Secrets. There's some real goofy yeah. shit in that one. I don't know. It's it, it was it might be to, my least favorite Harry Potter movie. It, it is my fa- least favorite. Yeah. Yeah. So in that in that regard, I think bottom of C is a good spot for it. Okay. So B tier. I'm I, you know honestly I might want to put Die Hard ahead of Edge of Tomorrow. This uh, is a, but, all right. You know if if you want to move Die Hard ahead of Edge of Tomorrow, I'm down for that. And then move Sorcerer's Stone above. I think I think Sorcerer's Stone over over Live Die Repeat Edge of Tomorrow. You think so? For me. I think so, yeah. Like that? I like that. Okay. So, All right, so A tier. I like that one, actually. I'm fine with that. What do you not like? You're good with the order? You know what? I agree. No modifications. All right, man. We've arrived at the S tier. This is the trickiest one. Do we even take a stab at ranking these movies? Because it's gonna this hurt. is like... I, gonna like hurt. Tomorrow, I will feel differently about this ranking. Agreed, but I guess yeah. for the sake of the content, we should. We got to do it. Um, we got to try. Okay, so I think at the very first, Annihilation is not as high up as it's maybe not as high. I agree. On this, uh, unfortunately, I think I might even put it near the bottom. I might put it like it's S tier though. Like you know, what I mean? like, we love it, but yeah, when you're looking at these movies, it's tough, man. Jaws, I think Jaws, maybe I don't know. This is gonna be so hard. <laughs> I yeah, have Jurassic okay, Park so... over Jaws. Let's do it this way. Do you have Jurassic Park over Jaws? Yes. Okay, so we'll we'll keep that and kind of move, shift them accordingly. Uh, the Shining has got to be over Jurassic Park and Jaws for me. But what do you think? I agree. Over, yeah. over it. Yeah. Now you, uh, you just leapfrog Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of yeah. the Ring is the only thing that I'm worried about now. So that has so to go higher for me. Should we put Fellowship at the front? Yeah, one or two for me right now. Okay. The Godfather. You know what? I'm actually kind of happy personally with The Godfather lower on S tier. Um, yeah. I know people you know, probably up in arms say it's the best movie ever made and get really frustrated with me. But as far as yeah. like adaptations go, it's a great and movie. It, but um, I, I don't feel strongly about it being at the top of the pile of, of S tier movies. It's also a preference too. Like, I, like I'm not a massive gangster flick guy. Like I do yeah. like the best of them. But uh, I think I think you know where I like it is in between Jurassic Park and Jaws. Do you like it less or do you like it more than Jaws? I like it less than Jaws. You do? Yeah. All right. Well, we might have to leave that one. I like it more. I, I like it more than Jaws. But let's leave that. All right. So uh, the thing. I think the thing is not as good as The Shining. What that's a crazy. I mean, just in general, like the fact that that sentence just came out of your mouth is wild. <laughs> I agree. But that's a, that's so hard to compare. I agree. I agree. <laughs> uh is it okay is the thing better than jurassic park oh my god man yeah yeah i think it is okay i think so yeah okay so i'm feeling good all right now let's blade runner man that's what blade runner and and fellowship uh is blade runner how does it hold up is it a shining better than blade runner i don't know (laughs) i don't know i I, I think leave it i think i think keep it over the shining okay uh fellowship is fellowship the top of this it is my like favorite it. of the three films i'll t- i'll keep it there i'll leave it there but if you want to move it down let me know i feel like i'm letting you keep blade runner at the top a little more than i would put it but that's because i haven't seen the movie as much as you um mm-hmm. i do love it i do think it's a little bit slow at times uh, it's a very it slow burn movie slow burn yeah same can be said for the shining not really the thing i would say not the thing yeah so these three are tough. I feel like they could be easily flipped, flip flopped. Ultimately, I kind of am hesitant to move anything. I don't know. There, there are flaws in all these movies. Yeah, we talk about them. But yeah, when it comes down to ranking them, I think we gotta. I think we gotta stick for now. <laughs> Until tomorrow. Uh, I think. Is this? Is how does it look? Does it look good? You feel good about I, it? It looks good to me. Yeah, I think. I think I'm good with that. Okay. So 
this was our tier ranking list for seasons one and two of our podcast ink to film if you would like to check out our in-depth discussions of it make sure to check out the the podcast or if you're a patreon fan you know you already know uh, uh in the future we might do uh our, our next season season three if you guys like this sort of content let us know in the comments um, and this is something we could try doing again in the future. Yeah. So let us know how the video content worked for you. Uh, and other than that, I think we're about done. What do you think? Yeah. Thank you to everybody for listening. This was a little painful, but I did. I did enjoy. It was a fun exercise. Yeah, it was fun. And hey, thanks for watching. And listening.